Let me know when the recording's on. All right, I got it. Hey, hello everybody. Um, welcome to my virtual uh, gallery visit. Uh, I'd like to start off thanking Robin Klein and the PA board and uh, you, the members of the PA for making this opportunity available to me. Uh, I put a lot of time and effort into this and uh, to be honest with you, I was a little bit afraid going into this, but I think it'll turn out okay. At least I hope it does. It will, it will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a little bit, bit about myself. I'm a multimedia artist. I paint, I draw, I take photographs. I don't dance. Sorry, don't do that. <laughs> uh, for the last couple of years, my focus has uh, been working in digital art. Uh, I just enjoy working in digital art. It fits my lifestyle right now. And I find it to be a lot of fun. Uh, my art is mostly per uh, personal art. It's about me. It's about my world and the things that I experience. Um, so I'm going to move on to the next slide. And that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, crap. OK, Robin, the slideshow is not working. Um, not good. Is that no. it down there? No. Is that no, it? I, can, I control it on my screen. Right. All righty. I'm going to take it off of uh, stop share for a moment and go back and see what we can do here. Okay. Well, that's embarrassing. Okay. All right. Hit the share. These things button. happen. Yeah. Hit the PowerPoint button. Share the PowerPoint. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> it's from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And there it goes. Oh, man. Well, that's really <laughs> an embarrassing. All right. You're a among friends. Art. Yeah, a yeah. little bit about the art you're going to see today. All of it was made on an iPhone 11. Uh, the app I used was the Teosui Sketch Pro. Uh, the art was all created from April 2020 to September 2001. So pretty much during the pandemic. A lot of the images, so the images aren't really about the pandemic. I'll have one or two images that will refer to it. But for the most part, I didn't make this a, pan a pandemic show. I'm going to start off with my digital drawing. Uh, this is a video as part of the process of how I do a digital drawing. Uh, my stylus is my finger, and this is on my iPhone uh, screen. The image you're going to see when it comes up is a sketch of sculptures by Joe M. Brody that were in the recent PAA show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There you go. So that's wow. how I draw on my phone. Wow. Yep. So when I first cool. started drawing on uh, my iPhone, uh, first couple sketches were uh, just kind of pen and ink drawings, little uh, just doodles. Uh, back in April, all the restaurants were closed and I really missed going out to a diner and having a cup of coffee. So I drew a diner coffee scene. I'm sure <laughs> you all recognize the different elements in it. Uh, Lawrence, how do you get that app? Do you, do you download that or how do you? Uh, to be honest, Beth, uh, Debbie, if I go into the technical stuff, we'll spend all day on it. Um, sure. We could save okay. that for another day or time. Sure. Or we'll talk about the art. Okay. So the next, yep. I, like I said, I wasn't doing a whole lot of COVID stuff, but the next one is a COVID test. <laughs> you know, when they <laughs> stick that uh, Q-tip up your nose and it feels like it's going into your brain. Wow. <laughs> all right. So now these are a picture of our grand cats. Okay. Maybe I have a set of grandcats that live in Florida. This is a this is a cartoon. It's a, it's not fine art by any stretch of the imagination. It's a little cartoon for our enjoyment. They're showing the, the quirky personalities of the cats. And uh, yes, the cats uh, did make it a game of knocking uh, balls off the Christmas tree. So now this is where I am uh, drawing on my uh, phone these days. Uh, I've gotten a lot better with drawing in detail, um, 
putting more color in, using patterns that are available in the app to create things that are just a, a lot more interesting, I believe. The one on the left is similar to a David Hockney drawing. And David Hockney is a very, uh, uh, very big digital artist. I mean, he's a great artist in painting and drawing and everything else, but he also is very versed in digital uh, art. On the right is a drawing of my friend. Uh, it's one of the probably the only golf uh, picture you'll see today, although I do do a lot of pictures about golf because I do like to golf. Uh, if you look at it, you'll see the grass is a pattern that the computer uh, supplies. So it makes it easy to cover in a broad area with something interesting. And the trees in the background were a flat green area. And then I put some stripes in with another, uh, uh, another design that they had on the app. So it, it makes for an interesting drawing, I believe. And there's a self-portrait. Uh, what I like about this self-portrait is I uh, use the black background and then use the white line. Um, I love go, that. Yeah, if you go to museums, you'll see that Picasso and Matisse uh, did this quite a lot in some of the paintings. <laughs> and it's, uh, it was something that I was always fascinated with. I don't know how they were able to do it in the painting unless they used the oil pastels, uh, but I was able to do it here on the computer and I, I just love the look of it. Lawrence may I ask, how big are these drawings? They're actually, they're drawn, all right, hold on one second. And thank you for that question. It's a very good question. On the actual iPhone screen, they're three and a half inches by five and a half inches. Uh, when they get converted into digital art and you go to print them out, they are actually 12 inches by 23 inches uh, with oh. 240 DPI. Okay. which is a lot of DPI so that these uh, can't be printed at, at that size or even bigger and they'll, uh, they'll retain the quality. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for asking the question. Uh, this is gonna be digital painting. And what's different in digital painting is that there's more colors involved in it, more patterns. It's not just a line as in drawing. Uh, I channeled my inner Bob Ross and called this a happy little <laughs> tree. I made it this afternoon for you guys. Uh, what I'm doing here is I'm picking up different tools in, uh, in the app and this is the fill tool. I draw a shape, put it in, I select different colors. You see the different colors popping up. I select that color and then I use it. Going back and forth, picking different things. I tried to make the tree a little bit brighter by uh, overlaying the color on it. And to go to the patterns, these are some of the patterns that are available. And now you got apples. So it's an apple tree. Mm -hmm. And then I select the white and then I draw in some, mm -hmm. as Bob Ross would say, a happy little cloud. There's one. Yeah, I hear it. There's two. And then finally, there's a third one. And then watch the field below. I'm gonna put some uh, yellow highlights in there. Yeah, and there they are. And that's a digital painting. And the actual time that you saw it is the time that it took to actually create it. Wow. That's great. Well, thank you. <laughs> How now, do you keep your see. hands so steady and the line so clean? Uh, Years and years of drawing. Uh, Joanne Zawalski will tell you you can't draw enough. And uh, I draw, I, throughout my life, I've always drawn. Uh, I just, it was just my fallback uh, activity. Uh, keep a sketchbook handy and a uh, pen tell pen and just draw. When I was in business meetings, I would draw all the time. My uh, assistants were always amazed that when I come back from a meeting, they look at my notes and there'd be all these crazy drawings in there, caricatures of other people in the meeting or the meeting itself. And uh, just, I like to draw. And I, that's probably what helps me to have the good hand and eye coordination for these drawings. Did you ever study art officially or you just learned it on your own? I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the School of Visual Arts. Oh, and okay. Th those four years were some of the best four years of my life. Truly enjoyed them. Yeah. I and then you became a cop. Yes, I did. I like to <laughs> I like security in my life. I wanted a regular uh, paycheck. I wanted a pension. I wanted health benefits. 
know, that's the artistic, like that. the, artistic, <laughs> the artistic policeman. There you go. And I love being a cop. So, but that's a story for another day. Yeah. This painting was done in April of 2020. It's one of the first ones I ever did. And I used a watercolor uh, brush or, you know, a virtual watercolor brush to make this little sketch of a man walking in the rain. So that's how I started out. And from there, I went into more of a pen and ink drawing style with watercolor washes. And um, I just, if you notice, there's different textures, like the color pad has very solid, solid colors. And then on the watercolor uh, painting, it just kind of washed in there a little bit. Um, it was easy to do and it was a lot of fun. Oh, now this is uh, mostly the digital oh, art that I missed it. Sweet. Yeah. Is this so, a child or a grandchild? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's actually a, a figment of my imagination. <laughs> I was looking for ideas to draw. A lot of my drawings come out of uh, just sitting there with the, with the drawing device in front of me and coming up with an idea for something. And I wanted to put in a cat, but I wanted to make a, a white cat and a black background. So actually I started with the black background and then I drew in the cat in white. So I subtracted the uh, color out of that and then it ended up in a nice cat shape and then just worked from there. And what I like about this is that now I'm starting to use the different patterns on the app, uh, like the checkerboards at the bottom, uh, the lines on the curtains to give the, the, the art a, a, a much more sophisticated look to it, a much more appealing look to it. So here we go, people, places, and animals. Now this is a series or a whole bunch of drawings I did. Over the course of the 17 months that I was playing with this app, I probably did just under 3,000 drawings. Wow. Quite heavy. <laughs> And I put the pattern in the background with the little yellow polka dots uh, and the stripes on her shirt and then gave her a little heart on her chest. And a great big smile. <laughs> the next two are, these are my daughters. Jessica's on the left, Rebecca's on the right. Jessica is very studious and loves to read. And Rebecca loves to be with dogs, just loves dogs. And uh, they both live in Florida. Uh, Jessica works from uh, Mouse. And Becky is getting her act together and deciding what she's going to do with her life. They're, they're both great girls. And they're also a lot of the reason why I make art. Uh, they're my number one audience. Uh, I run things by them. And if they said it stinks, then I, <laughs> I don't do anything with it. Or if it's inappropriate, then I was like, all right, never mind. <laughs> I'll get rid of this. Now, they're, they're probably my biggest fans. And they're also my... Uh, the people I reach out to the most, and I trust their opinion on our thing. How old are they, Lawrence? Uh, Jessica is 28, and Rebecca is, is she 20? Yeah, 28, and Rebecca is 26. Mm. 25. Oh, she'll shoot me. 25. <laughs> All right, this is my nephew, Brendan, and Brendan's going to the movies. The reason Brendan's upside down is because when I drew this, Brendan was on a business trip to China. <laughs> Oh, well, there he is in China. He's back since. He had a great experience. <laughs> really loved it. I was a little drawing of one of my neighbors. He accidentally ran into my mailbox and had to get a Band-Aid. Very sweet kid to lose across the street. <laughs> and I don't know if she's on tonight, but this is our friend, yeah. Noam Brody. I thought so. Yeah. <laughs> great. You see, one of the things, if uh, I'm in a Zoom meeting with you and I'm looking at you long enough, you may very well end up in a drawing or a painting. <laughs> you know, Joanne had that black tapestry behind it that is much more elaborate than what I drew, but I just found it very fascinating. All right, now, uh, these are a series of double portraits. Um, this is Hawaii. Debbie and I were supposed to spend our 30th wedding anniversary in Hawaii this uh, past summer. Well, not this past summer, but the summer before that, 2020. And thanks to the pandemic, we never made it there. So it's a picture of Hawaii. And well, Debbie and I don't look like that. There's a lot more of us to love these days than there is in that sketch. We were there on our honeymoon. Uh, we were looking forward to one day getting back to Hawaii. This is my brother, his wife, and their new grandson. During the pandemic, uh, his daughter had a child. 
It's a little, yeah, little John. Uh, and they were ecstatic to see him. They couldn't wait to go see him, but you know, with COVID restrictions, they had to wait till they were inoculated and everybody's vaccinated. And even when they were seeing the baby, they had to wear a mask. But uh, the baby's growing strong and uh, they have a great relationship with their grandson. This double portrait, well, it's not a double portrait to me because I'm not in the uh, hazmat suit. Uh, last <laughs> summer, I ran over uh, an underground nest of yellow jackets while mowing the lawn. And I got attacked and got stung from the edge of my pants to my socks by a whole bunch of yellow jackets. Ooh. Ouch. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it hurt. It hurt a lot. Fortunately, I wasn't allergic to it. And so we had to call in the professional. The professional exterminated the, uh, the nest underground. And he really did suit up like that because there could be up to 1,500, 2,000 bees, uh, yellow jackets in these nests. They, they go what? way underground. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so I put a lot of detail in there. If you see on his tank, there's a skull and crossbones. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a net over his face. And a lot of these things uh, are patterns that were available on the app. Uh, and I just, uh, by having used them so long, I know how to like, to say things with them. It becomes like a, a language that I can use in different pictures and different images. There we go from here. All right. Next bunch of seasons. I like to draw a lot of landscapes. I like to draw the seasons of the year and what's going on around me. Uh, if you look at the leaves, I was able to use digitalized shapes to, uh, to make an appearance of blowing leaves across the sky putting in different colors and just making uh, something interesting to look at. Hopefully you do find it interesting. Here's my neighbor raking leaves, a little dog hanging out. And again, <laughs> I'm making a lot of use of the different patterns to, to make this thing come alive. Uh, like the red leaves in the background, or also not just the patterns, but adding color and changing color. I got orange up front, I got red uh, leaves in the back. The dog's basically shapes. The rake is uh, just a blue splotch with some lines in it. Oh, a lot of fun to draw. And uh, I put a, tried to get a lot of detail into it too. This is winter. The yellow house is our house. Our house is not that small. It's not much bigger than that, but it's not that small. And just try to catch a, catch a feel for what it's like in winter. Uh, there's a little tonality in the sky on the left, and then on the right, I got like this cloud shape drifting through there to break up the blue sky, give it uh, a little bit more visual interest. Then a little bit of snow stuck in the branches. And if you look on the sides there, there's some yellow shadowing in, in the snow. Just to, you know, it's not just blue. The snow has got all kinds of different colors in it, and it really does have a lot of different uh, subtle shades of colors in it. If you look at it in the, the next time you're out in the snow. This is a forsythia bush. I've been drawing forsythia bushes and painting forsythia bushes for many years. I find them fascinating in the spring. I just love the way they come out, the, this big wall of yellow. A lot of fun to do with watercolor also. And uh, so this one, you know, it, it, I try to get a lot of colors in it. If you look over the yellow, there's a little bit of purple and then there's multiple shades of the green and the trees behind it. Uh, so I, you know, not just, putting flat planes of color in there, trying to make it somewhat interesting so that your eye has a, a chance to dance around and look at different things and be entertained. Well, summer is big for us and probably for just about all of you, if not all of you. On the left is our lake. Our community has a little lake. The girls grew up there. That's why there's a mother and a, and a, and a baby in a lake. The lifeguards always sit in this same chair. There's a little island out in it. And if you were in our community and you saw this picture, you know instantly that that's the Lake Continental Village. Uh, we saw her at Ocean City, New Jersey, and it's got a couple of things that, you know, a couple that being the ocean, me and the Jersey Shore to us. Uh, there's uh, ice cream with mint and chocolate ice cream on it, uh, a couple of frolicking in the surf, a cool Ocean City hat, and then at the bottom is saltwater taffy. Uh, there's always a box of saltwater taffy. <laughs> always. Now, I did a bunch of animals. I like to do animals also. Here's a goose. And what I like about this goose is that the, the, the flat planes of color remind me of Matisse color cutouts. I just uh, like the way the shapes are. It really isn't a, a whole lot of like detailing or anything, but 
it's all shapes and they, they seem to balance off of one another very well. At least that was my intent. With the goose comes a frog. Ah. <laughs> ah, that's good. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> and the the graphic the... quality is so good. Well, thank you very much. I would love to do that uh, or have it printed uh, at a, like enormous size, at least four by six feet. I think it'd be, I think it would hold up and look great. It's very meticulous. Yeah, here's a deer with a story. Uh, we plant, we started a garden, and then one day a little deer came in and he ate all the zucchini and the tomatoes. So we ended up in a picture. So we ended up in a picture. <laughs> Got something out of it. Yep. Yeah, see, and with the pandemic and people not going being so active, uh, we've had quite a lot of different wildlife in our backyard this year. Uh, I, we had a fox, obviously, and here he is. And we also had a mountain lion, but fortunately he was on the other side of uh, the stream. So he wasn't real close and he was going from point A to point B in a real hurry, but he was very majestic and impressive looking. Do you take a, do you do this from memory? Yes, yes. Uh, sometimes, particularly uh, um, with this fox, I would go and uh, Google some images of foxes just sort of to get the shape and the colors of, uh, of animals. No, I have a good that, memory, but I, I don't like, you know, you need something sometimes to just kind of start. You want to take play. a photograph of the fox. Oh, that fox was in and out of my yard so fast I would never get a picture of it. It did. <laughs> uh, Debbie loves giraffes, and we also, Disney is a big part of our lives. Uh, in Animal Kingdom, uh, which is a Disney resort, uh, recently they had a baby giraffe. And whenever we go there, uh, we see the giraffes. Debbie always talks about their, her giraffes. She loves her giraffes. I got to see my giraffes. So the baby giraffe obviously became Debbie's giraffe. And I just made a picture for her of a giraffe. And here's a baby giraffe uh, running on the savanna at Walt Disney World. Again, if you look at it, I don't know if you can see in the brown area, these are like little flowers that the pattern that the app has. And then some dots up in the tree and then some polka dots on the giraffe just to give them some different tonality and giraffes do have dots. This is the Ooh, Rockefeller uh, tree uh, owl. He's great. Yeah. I don't know if you remember the story of uh, when they cut down the tree for the uh, for Rockefeller Center for Christmas, there was this tiny little owl that got caught up in the tree. Right. Yes. And, yeah, and one of our artists, Candace Winters, actually did a whole bunch of series and uh, little figures of the uh, owl, and uh, she was uh, she he was uh, a muse for quite a while for Candace, and uh, I also used him as a muse for at least this picture. Some of these would be so wonderful in a children's book. Have you ever thought about something like that? Eh, I don't know. I don't like kids. <laughs> 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 That's not true, but I. Never really They'd be great them. in advertising or signs as well. Yeah, posters. They're so graphic. Well, thank you. They are. Gotta, I'm waiting for the world to discover me. <laughs> uh, aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. So here's a tiny goldfish sitting in a living room. Uh, <laughs> that's Matisse-like. Yeah, thank you. Well, Matisse did do goldfish. And I tried to get some patterns in there like Matisse and some of different colors and come up with an interesting image that would... Uh, you know, people would look at it and go, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, mm -hmm. something, I, yep. something I'm proud of is uh, if you look at the shelf, you'll see that there's a shadow underneath everything. And I was kind of proud and happy about the way that the colors came out. I thinned them down a little bit and put them in there so that they came out looking like shadows. And here's my version of the Peaceable Kingdom, a famous <laughs> painting. <laughs> you know, a little something for everything, but uh, off in the shadows, there's an alligator hiding out. So it might not be that peaceable. All right, we're getting towards the end. This is a section called fun stuff. It's uh, thing I like to do off the wall crazy stuff to amuse myself. Uh, first off, we start off with Matisse. If Matisse had a digital art program, what would he draw? I think he would draw things like this. Hmm? What do you think? Yes, sure. All right. It's bad. Oh. Or even all the other things. Yeah. <laughs> Your stuff yeah, has no. a really a very nice Matisse feeling with the color and the shapes in, in all of it almost. Well, thank you, Hillary. 
Right, the next slide is something that I've been drawing since I was a small child. I am fascinated by dinosaurs. And here's a little triptych of dinosaurs. Oh, <laughs> that's wonderful. Thank you. Yes. What kind of that? They're wonderful. Oh, thanks. We'll see what's next. Oh, here's something now. Some of you, if you are my age and you watch a lot of TV, especially the Christmas specials where we were kids, will recognize this drawing immediately. <laughs> it's the spotted elephant from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the island of misfit toys. Don't know. Oh, yeah, well, I guess it made a bigger impression on me than everybody else. <laughs> and here's our Still last slide. Another self-portrait. It's uh, me sitting in the sun, uh, looking at my phone, just kind of relaxing and enjoying the day. Lovely. So that's the show. Thank you. Wonderful. I'll stop. It Beautiful, here. Lawrence. Oh, oh, really? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Charming. It's, it's so and nice to know more about you through your artwork. It's oh, great. Thank you. Delightful. Delightful. Thanks. It's so bright and upbeat and just puts you in a good mood yeah oh, very joyful and yeah. it's very compositionally very strong mm -hmm. thanks uh, hey joanne what do you got i have to say that this was so enjoyable but i have had the opportunity to see his real his drawing um not with the graph you know not the um computerized stuff that he showed tonight and he had both in the computerized stuff that he showed tonight and his regular, he has such a phenomenal control of his line. Huh. You can see it. he, you have such a strength in with your line, the way you draw with your line. It is so powerful and so strong. And I love your colors. Yeah. You phenomenal color sense. And I'm really <laughs> excited to see oh, all yeah. the patterns. <laughs> You're just layering and layering and bringing us in even though the work has a, yeah. has a, uh, a sort of um, graphic quality, with all these layering, you're bringing the viewer in, it's becoming deeper and deeper, and it's just, it just holds your attention for so long. But I also have to say real quick, what you have to say verbally with these pieces is so strong. It, oh, thank you. The, the way you. The way you, talk, the way you say, well, oh, there was a deer in the backyard. Oh, and he ate everything. And the, and then he, but at least he got in the picture. I mean, that's <laughs> magic. That's magic. You also have a nice smile. Great. Very enjoyable. Well, thank that's you very fun. much. I have a question. Um, Please. Lawrence, um, <clears throat> I wondered whether the feeling uh, digitally when you're drawing, whether it's more closely related to cutting than to when you're using a paintbrush? Uh, yes, it is, because you're dealing with shapes and uh, you're, you're not painting, you're, you're making shapes. So it, it's more like a collage, especially if you go around something, you, you put it in an object and you wanna make a background around it, you, you, you're tracing around the object and you're dealing with a big field and it's, it's yeah, it has no, it's nothing like painting at all. It's, it's very much similar to collage. Thank you for, for noticing that. Yeah, I, I, thank you. It, it seems like it would be uh, hard to draw on such a small surface. For, you know? for some reason- Do, do you use those is, sticks on the thing that, that the pressure makes the line or it's I, pure finger? I don't think it would work on my iPhone. Uh, I use my finger. Okay. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of practice. It di I didn't start off being as detailed as I am now. It, it took a lot of drawing to get to where I am now. Uh, and also being able to know how to manipulate my finger around different things so that it doesn't overlap or, or just create a giant mess. I do, when I, um, I do have an Apple Pencil. So when I work on my iPad, I could use the Apple Pencil instead of a finger. They have a wonderful sophistication and humor. Yeah, that humor is something I think is uh, sorely missing in a lot of art these days. Yes. And I, I think that you can add a little art, a uh, little humor, 
you can add some beauty to art and it still doesn't take away from the seriousness of it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, I guess we've exhausted this. Shall we move <laughs> on to uh, looking at the rain or seeing what's on Netflix? No. <laughs> uh, uh. We will remember it was unique. Oh. Yeah, and I will be, this has been recorded, it'll be up on our YouTube channel, and I'll, I will email the link to everybody. Oh, wonderful. Thank you. I have oh. looked forward to this so much, and Thanks. I have enjoyed it so much, but Lawrence, I don't think I'll be doing this type of art, because my hands have to get messy, and, yeah. and <laughs> with this, my hands can't get messy, so I, I, I yes. really, I mean, Thank I'm amazed you. at how you could do this and walk away and nothing is dirty. I mean, it's just <laughs> to me, it's like you know, it's fantastic. I wish. Well, one of the other advantages is that there's uh, very little storage. Yeah, you can yes. uh, put it into in the storage on your iPhone. You can put it into your iCloud. You can put it on an external hard drive. You're not stuck with piles of papers or canvases just uh, filling up the garage. I won't let my <laughs> husband know about this thing. <laughs> Lawrence, are there like a lot of our are there a lot of other artists doing this kind of artwork that you know about or are you? There are a lot of people doing digital art these days. It's becoming very popular. Uh, the Westchester Community College uh, has a huge program down at their school and they've been doing it for many years. Uh, they do different programs than what I do. They have Adobe Illustrator and uh, several other uh, very sophisticated <laughs> programs that they're teaching their students. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I see, though, with digital art, a lot of it is fantasy stuff, uh, comics or Frank, uh, Frank Frazetta type of women and Vikings. Mm. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uh, stuff similar to mine. But, but then again, Carol, there could be a whole school of people doing exactly what I'm doing. I just haven't discovered them yet. <laughs> and is it like a generational thing? Like, this seems like a very... I'll probably, I would say, kind of on the older type of artists getting involved in digital art, I would say most of the people are probably a, a lot younger than me. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, right now, probably kids in high school are, are learning how to do digital art. Uh, and another thing is uh, they're all learning how to do 3D printing. Mm -hmm. So I know nothing about that. I put it in a... It's great how you uh, brought, brought in your everyday life with it. You know, yeah. things you're experiencing and so forth, which is great. Thank you. That actually started when I was in the School of Visual Arts. I had a teacher called Juan Gonzalez, and he's a very wonderful artist. Unfortunately, he's passed, and he draws very hyper-realism, just uh, these really awesome things. And he would always encourage me to put your heart and soul into what you're doing and make your art about you. That's why it's a little bit, it's, 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 it speaks to who you are. And, uh, and he just always felt that that was important. I sort of uh, just adapt, adapted that. And it's pretty much been my art style since I was a student at school. Was Marshall Arisman there then? Yes, he was in the illustration department. Very nice man. Yeah, because uh, he let me teach there for a little bit. Wow, well, it must be good because only the best get to teach at the school of <laughs> <Yep. arts. laughs> I've had some, I had some wonderful another stories. story for another time. Oh, well, I hope it ended well. It did. Good. Sure. So is it very technical to, 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 to download this? Uh, to this download story? it? No. To master it? I would say yes. And uh, you need nimble fingers. You have to have an Apple product. This app that I'm showing you today only works on Apple products. It doesn't work on HP or Chrome or anything else. So how do you just uh, type in the name or something? And then it... You go to the app store and you type in the name of the app and it comes up and you pay $6 and then you have the app. <laughs> What's the name of the app? Uh, Tasui Sketch App. Oh, Sketch It's uh, T-A-Y-A-S-U-I Sketch App. Is this Japanese company? Yes, it is. Yep. There's a lot of great apps out there. You don't have to go with that one. There's some that are completely yeah. free. Uh, it's just a question of finding one that you like and you're able to work with. Can you work on a computer with it too, right? You can work on an iPad with this one, which well, I do. 
What about uh, are, just a regular, uh, you know, computer? Yeah, well, if you have an HP, you have to find apps that are that work for HPs. I mean, if you want to spend a lot of money, you can uh, buy Corel or, or, or Adobe Photo, uh, Adobe Illustrator, but they, they're going to cost you probably I mean, about an Apple, bucks. An Apple, uh, not a desktop, but, you know, the one that you carry with you. What is it called again? Laptop. Tablet? Laptop, yeah. Can you use it with a laptop? I would imagine so. Yeah, just no, check it out and see. Goodbye who used the tablet and he had this uh, drawing thing and he could draw uh, the model and put chalk and everything. It was chalk, he'd pick out the color real fast. It was amazing. I could do that on this uh, thing if I wanted to. There's pastel, there's little brushes that are pastels, there's brushes that are oil paints, there's brushes that are fine line pens or, or fine line uh, you know, brushes. Uh, there, there's a computer animation or, there's, it's really a, a whole plethora of things that you can do with this stuff now. And uh, it's not limited to what I was showing you. You can make things that are oil, that look like oil paintings. You can make really great watercolors if you know how to do it. It's just a question of finding an app, mastering it, and then just doing it. Amazing. Hey, yes, Elsa. No, no not just do it, doing it and doing it and doing it and doing yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I was wondering, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I mean, this is the first work I really saw of yours. I probably have seen your work, but I don't remember. You do also other medias, right? I think, not just computer. I, I do, but uh, this has been my main media for probably the last three years, uh, oh, okay. just because it fits my lifestyle. It's really, I I think it's, it's amazing, especially it looks more like collages and that I think, like yeah. someone mentioned already, very Matisse related. Yeah. It's yeah. Beautiful, yeah. Oh, I mean, you, you could even take those pictures and make real collages out of it if you wanted to. If so I wanted to. Yeah, I could also, you want to, you put, want I, to I, I could, I've actually thought about having it printed on canvas and then adding paint on top of them. Uh -huh. But I'm just at this, the thinking stage. They, they print very nicely. And I can have them printed on canvas. I can have them printed on uh, multiple surfaces and then either leave them the way they are or expand or on them if I so yeah. choose. I think, doesn't Larry D'Amico do something like this? He prints. Larry does. Larry. Uh, canvas, right? He, he does. Them. Yes, he prints on canvas and then he paints over on top of it. Yeah. I don't want to be accused of copying Larry, though. I mean, it's Larry's thing right now. <laughs> no, but, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> your, but your work is so different. Nobody would. Oh, I know. I know. And that's, I'd put my, I would put my own spin on it. Yes, of course. Um, Lawrence, do you have any idea how large you can actually print the work from the iPhone? That's an excellent question. Um, I am able to get them at 240 DPI, which would allow you to print them up pretty decent size. Uh, but how the maximum size, I don't really know because after a while they would get pixelated and start to fall apart. Uh, I have a printer that, down in Austin that I use and I would prefer with him first and see what he says, uh, you know, how big could I go with it? What kind and of then, and then, oh. One second, but there's also, you can get in and modify them in certain ways to maybe bump them up a little higher. But to be honest, I don't know the answer to how big I could get them. I don't think I could go super large with them, but I could probably get a, a, a fairly decent size. I, I would say at least probably double them. So if they're 12 by 24, you know, I can do 24 by 48. They would hold up oh, nicely. Really? Yeah. What kind of Apple phone do you have? I have the 11. Yeah, I have 11. I can get uh, 300 DPI on mine. Oh, well, with this program, uh, that's how the, the program is already, it's plugged in. And then you just, uh, you take them off and you can put them into Photoshop and you can play around with the DPI. Yeah. Uh, if you're on the iPad, though, the iPad lets you set whatever DPI you want right from the beginning. Yeah. The iPad actually lets you pick the size of the, the canvas you want to work with and how much DPI you want to put in it. Can you, uh, can you use it on a, on a six? An, I, an iPhone 6? Well, I don't know. I don't know. That down I, I would think not because that's pretty old as far as uh, you know, yeah. technology goes. Um, Lawrence, have you ever experimented with um, printing on fabric? Oh. I have not. 
and, and it's something okay. that I would probably would like to do down the road. It's just something that I don't have fabric handy that I could print on. Uh, I'm sure if I talked to Larry D'Amico, he could probably help me out in getting something like that done. Some of them would be fun rugs. <laughs> isn't, isn't there a fabric paper that you could put in your computer, I think? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, well, I've used that. Um, oh. A number of them. There's cotton and there is actually silk. The only thing is they're limited, well, at least with my printer too, they're only limited to eight and a half by 11. Uh -huh. So I, I would... I'm curious if there's a place to send your photos or bring your photos so that they they could print it larger. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Color you probably group find is the best. Anything. I'm Color sorry. group. Color oh, group. <clears throat> there you go. Lawrence, where you print some, um, the they can do any size. Yeah, you, they can you do print anything. Very good. But yeah. I'm on mute, though. Wait, I'm on, I'm on Everybody mute, was so. talking. Color group? Is Color we, group in Hawthorne. Okay. Kevin Morgan is phenomenal. Right. What's his name? What? Kevin. Kevin Morgan. Kevin Morgan. I've used what? them forever. Oh, thank you. What is the name of the uh, printer place that you use in Ossining, uh, Lawrence? Oh, well, off the top of my head, it escapes me. Sarah's Yeah, yeah, Mark. Mark Could you Sarazen. spell that? He's Could you spell great. that? Pardon? How do you spell that? S A R A Z E N, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, he does a nice job. Editions. Yeah. He's he's very Marty good. Saracen. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, can we wrap it up? Listening, I thought of sure. Right. Well, I, I think we all thank you, Lawrence. This was a wonderful uh, a wonderful studio visit. Nice to see your work. Nice to. See some, see, meet your family. <laughs> Lawrence, I'm sorry that I got something and, um, I didn't see. <laughs> oh, well, With, you have to. Yep. Um, yeah. Your agenda, I'll be sending around the recording. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, and I just want to let everyone know it's advanced warning that on October 28th, we will have the pleasure of a studio visit with Elsa Schreiber Noll. Uh, and she you forgot you agreed. <laughs> and um, November 18th, we'll get to visit with Carol Bash. So, and, and I'm always interested if anyone wants to volunteer for the subsequent months, please let me know. Um, the calendar, you know. Uh, 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 we're we're going to start running out of people if people don't volunteer. So. I just have one question, Lawrence. What did you do? You did a, 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 a what is it called? Um, PowerPoint. Uh, what did you do? How to show the slideshow? That was a, a file, a PDF. No, it was a. Uh, I did it on PowerPoint. And, you had uh, PowerPoint, I, and then you yeah. can put it in. The, you can put it into a PDF, but I just on, left it on PowerPoint in the slideshow. I did PowerPoint as well. It's pretty yeah. easy. Yeah, uh, Robin gave yeah, me some pointers. And, I want to type here. And, and also, I, I always make myself available to kind of rehearse with people to help them work out the kinks. Well, well, Lawrence, I have to tell you, I so tremendously enjoyed your work. I well, did thank you. Because it's so opposite what I do. It really put me in <laughs> all these wonderful colors. And it's so, some of the pieces are, even though they're light, they still have a lot to say really a lot to say yes and i love oh. the fact how you represented your family in a way which is not like a, a photo portrait it's just the character of the it's just the feeling how the it's the characters you presented you didn't oh. copy every feature of your face like portrait artists often do mm -hmm. but you pulled out the, the their soul, so to speak thank you that's very I kind of you to say sense. thank you so yeah oh, I, mean, when? Soul, I mean like you could, it's not just the outside, you could feel a little bit of their character, what they are, what they're doing. How they mm -hmm. are. And I liked that so much. I mean, really so much. It was not a photograph, but it was art in a way which showed us your life. And I think that's wonderful. And um, so when is it going to be posted? Yeah. Right. I'm sorry. Thank you. When is it going to be on to view it? Um, it depends on how long it takes me to download. 
tonight. I mean, I don't think I may not be sent out, but I'll try to do it by tomorrow night or Saturday. What? I'm eager to see it. Lawrence, can I say one more thing? Tell your advisors, your two advisors, uh -huh. that they have a keen eye. They really have an incredible eye. <laughs> they do. No, I trust their I trust their opinions implicitly. Well, they That's are they they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, thank no you all way. for coming, and thank you for all your kind words. And, and this was a endearing. wonderful experience. It was endearing. Thanks, Lawrence. Bye, bye, bye everybody. Bye. Bye. Nice to see everyone. Yeah. Thanks again, Lawrence. Oh, thank you for all your help, Robin. That was great. Problems to